Welcome guys. With more twists and turns than a roller coaster, Amazon Prime's Citadel Episode 5 titled Time Renders Us Enemies surely gave us a lot to think about. Is it becoming too complex and diluting the enjoyment of the series? And has the additional casting choice been made poorly, with no consideration to the genre? Only one way to find out, as always, spoilers ahead for Episode 5. The episode starts with Mason and Nadia, nine years earlier in Morocco, as they get ready to play a newlywed couple, and Mason makes a move on Nadia with quite an expensive looking ring. He says he's in love with Nadia and wants to marry her, even though at this point he believes she is the Citadel Mole. Is he love blind? And is this a weakness in Mason's character? Does he desire to have a family due to the lack of his own? And is this affecting his judgement? As they have dinner, the truth spills out, and Nadia and Mason begin a heated argument about the secrets they have, leading us to see the downfall in Mason's plan, as he is so fond of telling us that the key to being a good spy is to tell the truth. Nadia gives him a chance to come clean. However, he chooses not to, with Nadia finally telling him she knows about Celeste's backstop. This whole scene is great, contrasting Mason's previous statements about truth as well as forcing Nadia to see his true character. I love the fact it shows us the life of a spy is never easy, and no matter how much you love each other, there will always be lies, or the thought your partner is lying. With Mason even telling Nadia he knows she has the Ozki, and that he doesn't care, he loves her anyways. But the best moment here comes from a fellow diner, who tried to shush the wrong person. Is your fault. Eat your fucking salad. This does make us question the conversation though. They were openly talking about Citadel at this point, and being a spy, and if that one guy could hear them, who else could? Were Manticore close by? And have they already got one step ahead and converting Celeste, who is now held up with Bernard's family, and a potential hidden ace up Dahlia's sleeve? As we move to the present time, we continue with Bernard and Anders, as he is partially untied. But out of nowhere, Anders is shot in the head with a silenced pistol, and yet somehow manages to stumble his way up to Dahlia. This just shows us the pure brute strength of these powerhouse brothers, that not even a bullet could stop them straight away. Is this unrealistic? Maybe, but it made for a riveting scene. For a moment, I almost thought he was going to kill the remaining guards and somehow walk away from this alive. Alas, it was not meant to be. Dahlia then continues to threaten Bernard's family, and although he reluctantly gives the password, they are still targeted, which leads them to escape down a secret bunker. We'll come back to the secrets Dahlia holds and the outstanding power move in the final scene in just a moment. As first, I want to touch on the introduction of a new character, and a very poor casting choice. As we experience the biggest twist of the series so far, with Nadia now having an 8 year old daughter and discovering that Nadia's dad is actually a known terrorist, Rahi Gamba, played by Paul Basley. The reason behind this whole casting choice is the actor is known in England for a British comedy series, Benadorm, where he plays a character called Troy, as they enjoy a regular holiday in Spain. Sorry, sorry. Are you alright? Knowing this information from me takes the seriousness away from the show and completely distracted me from the importance of Nada escaping the country and the potential reasons behind it. As we come to the final scenes of the show, we are left with all the twists coming out at once. Nadia and her daughter, with Mason being the father, the fact that she's not a mole was a bigger shock for Carter than anyone. And Dahlia now knows about Mason's daughter, and that he is the only one who can get these nukes launched. This leaves us with too many questions. Who has been looking after Nadia's daughter this whole time? Why is Mason the only one with clearance? Did Bernard's family survive? All questions we want answered in the final episode next week. What an amazing episode, with a runtime just over 38 minutes. I'm not sure how they managed to get so much in. With this being the penultimate episode, I finally feel like we're starting to get some of those questions answered. With Nadia being confirmed as not the traitor, but secretly a mother, 
who has now missed eight years of her child's life. Near the end of the episode, we see Bernard and Kyle's families escape, but not without grabbing another case, with all things now resting on a fingerprint from Kyle. Could this case contain a backup vial of Mason's memories? With Celeste's character still very much up in the air, she could still be the mole, but I think it's very much unlikely, as she's been backstopped for such a long time before the mole incident. The only way it's possible is if she did get her memories back and then was backstopped a second time. Else, if she currently has her memories, I'm not sure why she would have had Mason's baby, unless it's a way to force him to comply in the future. With so many questions still left unanswered, I'm hoping next week's episode has a longer runtime. Else, I think it's going to end with a cliffhanger. Join us in a few days as me and Ben dive deep into some of these questions in our weekly and final Citacast. Thanks for coming. Like and subscribe as it really helps us to grow. What are your thoughts so far and who do you think the mole is? Have you given Silo a try yet? We've been breaking down every episode as they've aired. Check out the link and as always, catch you next time with something new.